A consumer group claims that the Dorito snack pack size has an average weight below 1.75 ounces, which is the weight labeled on the bags. A random sample of 49 bags had an average weight of 1.71 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.13 ounces. With the 5% significance level, test the consumer group's claim. Give the practical interpretation of the outcome of the test. Okay, so right here, this phrase, it says, at the 5% significance level, test the consumer group's claim. When you see that phrase, test the claim, you know you're dealing with a hypothesis test. If you're dealing with a hypothesis test, the first step you want to do is to identify the claim. So let's start that out. There's going to be seven steps in total, so we're going to do step one, identify the claim first. Okay, so we want to express the claim in symbols. Here at the top, it says a consumer group claims that the Dorito snack pack size has an average, that'll be mean, weight below 1.75 ounces. So a mean that's less than 1.75. So in symbols, we'll write mu for the mean less than 1.75. Okay, now our second step from there is going to be to identify HO and HA. That's our competing pair of hypotheses. Okay, now in order to do this effectively, what you want to do is realize that HA uses three symbols. It either uses less than, greater than, or not equal to. That's HA. So if the claim has any of those three symbols, the claim in HA will be the same. If it doesn't have one of those three symbols, then the claim must be HO. So when I look at these three symbols, I realize that the claim has one of those, so the claim and HA are the same here in this problem. Okay, now to get HO, we just do the complement or the opposite of this. So it says the mean is less than 1.75. The opposite of that is that it would be greater than or equal to 1.75. That's the complement of less than 1.75. <clears throat> Notice HO has an equal sign, which it's supposed to have, so we're good. Let's go on to step three. Okay, now in step three, we basically want to just record the data. So record the data. All right, in these problems, if you're doing a hypothesis, hypothesis test about the mean, you're going to have an n, you're going to have a sample mean x bar, you should have a standard deviation, and you should have an alpha. <clears throat> if alpha is not given, you will assume it's 5%. It's usually given in the problems, but if it's not, we'll assume 5%. Okay, so let's try to figure out what the sample size is for this problem. This is a random sample of 49 bags, so n is 49. It says 49 bags had an average weight, that's an X bar, of 1.71. 1.71 for the average. And a standard deviation of 0 0.13 ounces. So 0 0.13 goes here for S. And then finally, alpha. They tell us that we're dealing with a 5% significance level. So alpha is 5%. <clears throat> okay, let's go do step four now. Our fourth step in the problem is an important one. It's to get the test statistic. So we're going to get the test statistic. We'll just shorten that to test stat. <clears throat> the test stat formula, when the sample size is large and it's a hypothesis test about the mean, is as follows. Z equals to x bar minus the mu sub zero sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, so let's try to plug in the numbers we have here to fill in this formula. So x bar we know is 1.71 minus this guy here, the mean sub zero. And that little subscript sub zero is trying to tell us that we get this number from HO. So you see HO has that same subscript sub zero, right? So we wanna use the number that's found in that hypothesis in this formula. So 1.75 goes here. All right, now, sigma can be substituted by S as long as your sample size is large, which it is, so 0 0.13, and then divide by the square root of N, N is 49. All right, let's work, let's work that out in our calculator. <clears throat> okay, so of course 1.71 minus 1.75 is minus 0.04, but let's just put everything in the calculator all at once just to show you how you would do that. 1.71 minus 1.75 should be at the top in parentheses, right? Make sure you use parentheses. Then divided by 0 0.13, and again, use parentheses before you do that as well. So 
0 0.13 divided by the square root of 49, and that'll be, of course, 7, or you can actually type in the square root of 49 if you want. Okay, and at that point, we get the answer negative 2.15. Negative 2.15. All right, that's our test stat. So negative 2.15 is a pretty extreme test stat. We want to know if it's extreme enough to let us reject HO. So if this is too extreme, we'll reject HO and say it is not valid, um, or at least the data makes it look like it's not valid. But in order to figure out whether we should reject or not, we have to have a critical value to compare this test stat against. So the question is, is this extreme enough? Is this far enough away from our sample data, right? So we're getting the distance between the sample data and the hypothesized HO value, right? And we're trying to see if that distance is too great to allow HO to be true. So what we're going to do here is we're going to um, find a critical value to compare this against and to determine if we're allowed to reject HO in this instance. Okay, so to get the critical value, which will be our step five in the problem, we want to draw a bell curve. So this is to get the critical value. To do that, we're going to draw a bell curve. So we draw a bell curve, and then we want to label on this curve the tail area that is going to contain the rejection region. It could be one-tailed or two-tailed. If it's one-tailed, it could be on the left if, or on the right. And if it's two-tailed, of course, we'll have two shaded areas where we'll reject HO if our test stat lands in those shaded areas. Now, in order to determine whether we have a left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed test, we have to look at HA. So when I look at HA, I see that symbol here, which looks like an arrow pointing to the left, right? And less than is going to be that. It's going to be a left tail test. So remember that when your HA has a less than symbol, it means a left tail test. If it has a greater than symbol, it would be pointing to the right. It would be a right tail test. And when it's not equal to, it's a two tail test. So remember less than means left tailed. All right, we're trying to figure out what number goes here. That's our goal, right? That's the critical value, right? That's going to be our critical value, the number that goes right here. So we know it's a Z number line. We're trying to figure out what critical value or what number starts that rejection region. Because if your test stat falls over here, you're going to reject HO. If it falls in here, you're going to not reject HO. So do not reject HO. So our goal is to figure what critical Z value goes here. All right, the way we're going to find that is very simple. We're going to, since it's a one-tailed test, if it's a one-tailed test, you're going to look up alpha on the T table under infinity, right? So remember, on this T table, we have some critical Z values. And if we look under the infinity row, we can find them. So as long as this alpha is something traditional like 5%, 10%, 1%, you know, so on and so forth, um, if it's one of those kinds of critical values, then we'll tend to, or one of those kind of alpha values, I should say, and we'll be able to find it on the t-table. Now, the rule is very simple. We will look up alpha on the t-table if we have a one tail, right? If we have a two-tail test, we'll look up alpha divided by two, right? So if that happened to have been two tails in this problem, we would have divided this alpha by two and then looked it up on the t-table. Here, however, we have just one tail, so we're just going to look up alpha because all that's going to be contained in that one tail. So we'll look up alpha on the t-table under infinity. Let's go do that now and come up with our critical value. Okay, so we're looking up 0 0.05 under infinity. So 0 0.05 column is there, and then we're going to scroll down until we get way at the bottom. And we see the answer is 1.645. Okay, so on our t-table we found the value 1.645, right? But it'll be negative because it's on the left. Remember, the table doesn't give you the negative sign, so you have to pay attention to whether it's on the left or the right-hand side. In this case, it's a left tail test, so that'll be a critical value of negative 1.645. All right, now in step six, we want to form our initial conclusion. Initial conclusion. So in order to form that, what we're going to do is we're going to compare this critical value to our test step. Now, if our test stat is to the left of that critical value on a number line, we are going to reject HO. So we can see this visually by looking at our drawing and identifying where this test stat lands on the curve. 
So I would see that it lands over here, and therefore we should reject HO, because remember, negative 2.15 is to the left of that. All right, now if you conclude that you're going to reject HO, remember that HO is in competition with HA. So if you reject HO, then you must be supporting HA. These go hand in hand, they must go together. If you reject HO, you're always supporting HA. All right, if you do not reject HO, you are not supporting HA because these go hand in hand, this guy pairs up with this guy. All right, so we have our initial conclusion. Now the last step is to come up with our final conclusion. For the final conclusion, we just want to word our conclusion to the problem. What we want to do is we want to say to ourselves, okay, look, one of these two things is what we're going to say about the claim. Either we're going to say we reject the claim or we're going to say we support the claim. That all depends which one our claim is. Was our claim HO or HA? When we looked at our claim, we identified in the beginning that it was the same as HA, which means we should use this language when describing the final answer. So we're going to say the sample data support the claim. Okay, so we're saying the sample data support the claim that the average weight of Dorito bags, snack pack bags, is less than 1.75 ounces. So going to this into a practical interpretation of the outcome of the test, if we're saying that the average weight is less than 1.75, which is the weight that's supposed to be the weight of the snack pack bags, that means that the consumer group is correct and that the Doritos company is cheating the consumers, right? Because they're not filling the bags up enough. There's less weight in the bags than there should be.